Hi, and welcome to Tiger Art. Today we're going to be learning about a very important, very famous American artist named Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was a printmaker, and that means that he made prints. And it's not like you would think like printing something off a computer. This is back uh, a little while ago. So they were, there wouldn't be printers readily available like they are today. So we're talking about the actual art of making a print using what you would think of maybe like a stencil or a stamp. So if you place a stencil down on a page that's shaped like something and you push ink through it and then you lift the stencil and you're left with that shape. That would be similar to the process done by Andy Warhol. So let's go through some of Andy Warhol's famous prints and look at what his style was all about. He was called a pop artist and he was one of the important figures in starting and really getting, uh, getting going the pop art movement. Pop art, if we look at the words pop art, pop comes from popular, so things that are part of pop culture, which is objects or people or things that everybody would recognize. So things that are part of our pop culture today could be like famous characters from cartoons or famous musicians or famous actors and actresses, movies, TV shows, anything that is part of pop culture would be good subjects for pop art. That's what the pop artists were all about. We're using those subjects as subjects for the work of art. So then who's this? Very famous figure from Andy Warhol's time. This is Marilyn Monroe. We can see a bit of the pop art style here. Lots of bright colors, usually the use of black and imagery that is of something you recognize. In Andy Warhol's time, everybody would recognize this. You may not. Campbell's soup cans. And this brings about something else that Andy Warhol would do quite a bit. So looking at this picture, this, this print of the Campbell's soup cans, and thinking about how it was made, let's just use the example of a stencil. If you have a stencil that's shaped like a heart, and you put it down on a page and you put red ink over it and then you lift the heart up, you're going to have a red heart on the page. What if you washed it out, put it on another piece of paper, and pushed blue ink through it? Then you lift it up, you have a blue heart. They're exactly the same picture but different colors. Now he's using multiple stencils that are stacked on top of each other for every color in his print. So every time he uses a new stencil for a different shape in the print, he has the option of changing the color. What if you printed a red heart on, let's say, a black piece of paper? You would have a completely different picture than if you printed it on green paper or blue paper or white paper. So by changing all these colors, you can come up with many different combinations of colors and still use the same stencil. That's a pretty valuable part of printmaking. Now, I'm a painter, so if I wanted to make a, uh, four different pictures with all different colors, I would have to paint each individual picture to have those colors that I wanted. That could be time consuming. As a printmaker, Andy Warhol would only have to make his stencils one time and then change the color each time and he could do it a, you know, infinitely many combinations, as many as he has time for and materials for, and each one could be different. So he would often print sets of four or more of the same thing. And the repetition of those with varying colors would make a composition. So either you could sell these individually as one, or you could sell sets of them like as a group of four like this. He also made some prints with flowers that look like this. This is a pretty famous print. I've seen it in several places before. He also has variations on this where they are printed more than once. I really like Andy Warhol's Endangered Species series. And that's where he printed pictures of animals and used bright colors in them. So you'll notice in these Endangered Species prints, you'll notice the use of bright colors that really exaggerate some of the uh, 
the movement lines around the outside and make them more interesting. I really like this one. I like the colors and I also really like the line work. It makes it more interesting and it adds movement to the piece. Meaning when you look at it, you can imagine the movement of these lines. This is a neat print of a frog using bright colors and some of those outlines. I'm sure we can appreciate this in Tiger Art class. Look at the background in this one. I like the way it looks. It looks kind of neat. It's like two different versions of the same color with uh, some texture over it. So it's like making the texture of a background there. This one is really cool. I like how the lines are offset from the zebra. So it's like if you were to print those lines directly where they belong, they would fit right on the outline between the black and white. But if you move it a little bit, so when that yellow was printed, I think the stencil was moved over a bit, causing what's called an offset. And that just kind of offsets the edge and adds an extra layer to it. It adds more depth and it adds a bit of movement to it as well. It makes it more interesting to look at. It's kind of a neat idea. I can see some of that offsetting here as well, where the outline around the elephant just missed. So it's the same shape, it just looks like it was slid over a bit. Also, it's cool to see a pink elephant. I really like this one, picture of an orangutan, and I, it just looks kind of goofy to me, but it still is cool looking. So it's still a cool work of art, but it also is kind of goofy, it makes me smile. Pop art does that for us a lot. So I said pop art's all about things that are famous or easily recognizable. Nothing's more famous than Mickey Mouse. Everybody recognizes Mickey Mouse when they see it. Here's a set of four Marilyn Monroe's, all printed with different colors. This is something that I said was very common in Andy Warhol's work. I've seen this stuff since his time. So he was working, you know, 40 or so years ago. I've seen a lot of things like this now. So I might see posters or advertisements things in commercials or TV shows, movies that look just like this, inspired by Andy Warhol. Let's take a look at some. So do you think the artist that made this advertisement for the TV show Family Guy, do you think they were inspired by Andy Warhol? I think so. What about this one of Homer Simpson? Do you think the artist that made this was inspired by Andy Warhol? Absolutely. So these are just two examples of artists that have been inspired by Andy Warhol. As we go further into this project, I'm going to show you other pop artists as well. For now, we're going to shift our conversation to talking about color. We've had lessons in the past about using the color wheel and how to organize the color wheel. Now we're gonna talk really about how to use it and use it to make a picture. So how to use a color wheel to pick sets of colors that look good together. The way a color wheel is set up, it's set up using the three primary colors first, red, yellow, and blue. These are three colors that you cannot make by mixing other colors together. So they have to come first. The word primary means first. If you were to mix two primaries together, you will get what's called a secondary color, which comes second. Now, a secondary color could be something like green, violet, or orange. Green, violet, and orange are made by mixing primaries. So like if you take yellow and you add blue to it, you're gonna get green. If you take yellow and you add red to it, you're gonna get orange. If you take red and you add blue to it, you're gonna get violet. Then you can take those colors and mix them together to make other versions, and we talked about those in a previous lesson about color. We don't need to worry about them today though. Really what we're gonna talk about today is how to use the color wheel to pick different colors sets that will look good together. We call them color schemes. So let's take for example the primary colors. If you were to take red, yellow, and blue and put them together in a picture like this, you would get something that looks good. None of those colors will look like they don't belong. That is because they are evenly spaced on a color wheel. There's even amount of space between red, yellow, and blue, making the colors have harmony. 
thinking about that, if we rotate those three colors and keep them evenly spaced, we could find that the secondary colors are also evenly spaced around the wheel. So we could use a secondary color scheme like this one. Here we see orange, green, and violet. No color looks like it doesn't belong. Now we could also pick a color scheme by going directly across the color wheel. Using only two colors here, we would take one color and we would take its opposite. So across the color wheel from red is green. Across the color wheel from orange is blue. And across the color wheel from violet is yellow. Using them together in a picture would be called a complementary color scheme. Think like complement, like these colors complement each other. For example, if you take black and you put it up against white, those are opposites. What makes the white look brighter is the fact that it's next to the black and it's so different from it. Colors work the same way. Red will never look as red as it does next to green because you're seeing it next to something that's the opposite and it makes it pop. It makes it stand out even more. So think like it complements the other color by making it shine brighter. We could also use what's called an analogous color scheme, which is when you're using colors that are right next to each other on a color wheel or like color neighbors. So these colors will be things that are similar, like red and orange or orange and yellow. Why do orange and yellow look so much alike? The reason is because orange has yellow in it. So a lot of times when you're picking analogous colors, you're actually picking one color that's part of the other color, like red and violet, because red plus blue equals violet. So violet has red in it. If you put it next to red, it's going to look like it belongs because they're part of the same family. They're analogous or they're similar. You could also take the color wheel and just cut it right in half and say here's red, orange, and yellow on one side and here's green, blue, and violet on the other side. So we could split it in half and we would have two separate color schemes. One would be the warm side and one would be the cool side. Now warm colors, red, orange, yellow, if you use them together in a picture, it's going to look good. The colors are going to go well together because they're all of the same family of warm colors. Now the flip side of that is if you were to use only cool colors, blue, green, and violet, that's going to look good together in a picture as well. So today we're gonna be doing some color experimenting and um, going through some color charts to make sure we really understand these color schemes. All right, so for today, I'm gonna have you working on a color worksheet just to learn the color schemes or to review them. So you'll go into Schoology, you'll go to your courses, so just by getting over here, and you'll find your class, you'll find today's class period, and you'll see in there you want color schemes.png, actually JPEG does the same thing because we're going to screenshot it. Um, I wasn't able to get a good way of saving this image so I'm just gonna screenshot it and it'll save it to my photos that's good enough for today and then we're gonna open sketchbook and you're gonna touch the file menu in the top left corner of your screen you're gonna tap gallery and then from gallery view you should be able to hit the plus at the bottom of your screen and hit new from image import photo if it asks you if you want to allow it to do that absolutely select the screenshot you just did tap create now you're in here so you want a like a pencil or a pen reasonable size to write your name up where it says name Don't worry about block, that's not for us. And then we're going to fill in all the colors for each color scheme. So for example, I would find on my color wheel red here, my color picker. I would color the red at the top in this color wheel. And then I would go to warm colors and I would 
color one of these boxes red. What's another warm color? How about orange? So I'd find orange, I'd go to the O on the color wheel and I'd color it in. Then I'd come over here to the warm color blocks and color one of them orange. Another warm color is yellow. So I would come up here and color the Y box yellow or the Y circle yellow and then the Y or the box down here yellow. So red, orange, yellow is all the warm colors. Next I would go to cool colors. Cool colors are going to be like your greens. Your blues. And your violets. So by now my color wheel top is complete. I can use it just as a reference to look at. So cool colors, don't worry about these boxes, they don't mean anything. They're not for us. Complementary, we do need to worry about. So complementary is two colors that are opposite of each other, like red and green. They're directly across the color wheel. You have to travel through the center. So the first one would be red. Let me show you a neat trick here. If you hit this eyedropper here, now it gives you a little target. Drag that around and find a color and it picks it for you exactly as it was when you made that mark. So I can eyedropper my orange. Eyedropper my blue. Eyedropper my yellow. And eyedropper my violet. So that's complementary. These are three different complementary color schemes. This is one, red and green. This is two, orange and blue. This is three, yellow and violet. And you can find those once again by going straight across on a color wheel. Like that. So a triadic scheme. We're just gonna do two of these, not three. And they're gonna be, this is gonna be the first one and this is gonna be the second one. Triadic just means three that are evenly spaced. What was the first three? That's primary. So write down primary, P-R-I-M-A-R-Y. And then you're gonna pick the primary color. So eyedropper, red, Eyedropper, yellow. Eyedropper, blue. Then the second one was secondary. And those were green. Orange. Oops, I can eyedropper and get the exact same one. And violet. So just to reiterate that, um, this is one color scheme and this is the other one. They don't go top bottom this time. Like this is number one, this is number two. And primary is one and secondary is two. So now analogous, same thing you're gonna go left to right here. So this is gonna be one analogous, two, and three. So analogous are any two colors that are next to each other on a color wheel. So let's just pick any color you want to start with. I'll pick purple. And what is analogous to violet or purple? I could either go with blue or I could go with red. It does not matter, just pick one. So are those two colors analogous? Yes, they are. So pick a different color. How about orange this time? What's analogous to orange? Either red or yellow. So one of its neighbors. Pick the other neighbor and put it in here. 
So now we have orange and yellow are analogous. And whoops, I want to use my eyedropper tool. So how about I pick green this time? What's analogous to green? I would hope you would say blue is and yellow. So these are three separate examples of analogous color schemes. And these are ones that are next to each other on the color wheel. Secondary are the secondary colors like this. Primary are the primary colors like that. Complementary are the ones across from each other. And then if you split the color wheel in half like this, warm is on one side, cool is on the other side. So you don't have to do all those lines. All you have to do is fill in these colors appropriately. After you're done, you can do one of two things. You can either screenshot this and submit that picture, or you can go to the file menu, if you wanna do this more the right way, and go to uh, share, save image. Now when you go to upload to Schoology, you'll be able to go to this assignment and upload that image, either the screenshot or the saved image. Next time we'll get started on our drawing. Okay, have fun.